Hey, what's up everybody? Boyd, we got a fun tutorial today. We're gonna to be going over some Cinema 4D particles and we're gonna be making fluid simulations out of them. So first of all, shout out to Alessandro Bancio who came up with this idea and he is the creator of all of our Octane products. So make sure to check these out. We have some great Octane textures and lighting rigs. So check that out at the Pixel Lab. All right, so we're gonna jump in and we're gonna be using the Cinema 4D 2024 particle system to wrap some particles around this spline and make it look like liquid. We're gonna start by going to our particles and we're not going to use a spline emitter, we're gonna use a basic emitter. And we're gonna change it from a rectangle under the shape, we're gonna change that to a circle. We're gonna scale that down quite a bit. And we're gonna position this right at the base of this helix so that we have the particles shooting out right at the bottom here. All right, so we want these particles shooting out and then wrapping up around this helix spline. So we're gonna do that under simulate, we're going to click forces and we're gonna click field force. And just to keep things tidy, let's drag that into our particle group so we have everything neat and organized. And in that field force, we're gonna drag the helix into this field. All right, so we're gonna change the velocity type from add to velocity to set absolute velocity. And we're gonna crank up the strength a lot, maybe like 500. And now let's go into this spline here and change a couple settings. So for the length, instead of use value, we're gonna change that to normalize. And if we hit play, this uh, particle system is now wrapping around that helix. However, we have all these crazy lines here which we don't want, so we'll go to the display tab, and under the display box, let's uncheck that so that we don't see those. All right, this is looking good. Let's go to our basic emitter, and let's go to our rate and crank that way up, maybe to 10,000, so we have a lot more particles. All right, it's looking good, but for this to be a fluid simulation, we're gonna have um, a lot more randomness involved. So we're gonna go to simulate forces and we're going to add a turbulence. So make sure this turbulence gets put underneath the field force. We need this stack to be organized, so it reads the field force first and then the turbulence. All right, so under strength, we're gonna crank this way up. The scale is gonna be 25% and the frequency will be maybe 65. And let's see what this looks like. All right, so we have a bunch of turbulence and now we're getting a lot more randomness here, which is great. But these particles are moving a little bit too far away from each other. They're kind of spreading out a bit too much. So we're gonna add some friction into this. And this is also gonna give it a bit more viscosity so it looks more like a fluid. So we're gonna add a friction. We're gonna put it below the turbulence and let's crank the strength to maybe 40. We'll have maybe one on angular strength and we're gonna change the mode to force. And this is gonna slow everything down. It's gonna make the particles kind of glob together a little bit more. There's a bit more friction kind of pulling them together so they don't spread out quite as much. And this is gonna look really nice once we put this into a volume builder. All right, so that's looking very good. Now to make this look like uh, fluid, we need to connect all these particles together and we're gonna do that with the volume builder. So if you didn't know, you can actually drag a particle group into a volume builder and you do that by grabbing this folder called particle group and drag it right in here. And now we're making voxels out of this. So under the voxel size, we're gonna drop that down to two and it looks really blobby, but we can smooth that out by clicking this SDF smooth. Just click that once, it's getting a lot smoother. And if you go back to this particle group, there's some nice settings for particles. And one of them that's great is radius. If we increase this to say 50, it's gonna get really big and blobby. And uh, if we put this down, say to five, it's gonna kind of erode away and it's gonna make some holes in the mesh here and make it look a bit more like a fluid. So it looks a bit more like water splashing. All right, so from here, we need to add a volume measure. We'll drag the volume builder into that measure. That will also smooth it out a little bit. So now we're having this effect where everything's kind of globbing together and looks a little bit more like water. So what we're gonna do now is right click on this volume measure. And once you're done with the animation, it's really nice to add this into an Alembic file. So I like to bake as Alembic and then delete. So this is gonna export it as an Alembic and it's not gonna export the particles, it's just gonna export this mesh as a object. All right, so now we can just delete our emitter and our particle group and go back to the first frame. Let's turn off that helix. And now you can see that we have our animation. We can scrub through it, which is awesome. We can even time remap this, which is really nice. And there we go. We got particles that have turned into kind of a fluid type simulation. And then what you can do is add a product into here. We have another splash coming out of this bottle. And what you're gonna get is a render kind of like this, which is really cool. 
if you're interested in this lighting rig, this is um, rendered in Octane, and this is from our Octane Lighting Essentials 2, where we have a bunch of different lighting studios, and the lighting and everything is perfectly set up with espresso rigs, so you can just drag and drop your objects into them, and they look pretty incredible. So if you're an Octane user, make sure to check that out. I'll put a link below for that. Huge shout out to Alessandro Boncio as always. Thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.